build your own canvas, um, canvas structure bars. It's very easy. I've been doing this since I was an undergrad. And at your local home supply store, Home Depot or Lowe's, you'll find trim. And this is called quarter round. And it's called quarter round because it's a big round dowel that's been quartered, okay? So go ahead and pass that around so you get an idea about what that looks like. But there are all kinds of trim in um, the home supply store. There's, there's trim that looks like that too, uh, which is a little different. And it's not quarter round, it's trim. And it goes at the bottom of your baseboards to hide the irregularities in the drywall. So the objective, it's very simple. Um, when you make your own stock, and that's what we call it, we call it stretcher bar stock, all you need is um, one by twos, which is what this is. And you need to make sure it's straight. And the way that you make sure it's straight is you close one eye and you look down it and make sure it isn't too bowed. If it's really heavily bowed, it is not going to be good frame stock for you and your canvas will be bowed. And we have to figure out a way to affix our trim or a quarter round to the one by two. And you'll notice that that's a pretty wide, about an, an inch and three quarters, almost two inch side. So it's a real beefy kind of canvas that I'll be making. And if you pass it around, you'll feel that it's significantly stronger than the Fredericks kind that you buy at Hobby Lobby. It will last you forever. You can stretch and restretch, stretch and restretch, and use it for years because it is that sturdy. So I would call these heavy duty. One of the pieces of, um, these come in eight foot sheet uh, section, 16 foot, four foot, you can cut them down at the store. These are about $2, maybe three. Um, and then the one by twos are about the same. So it's, it's very affordable. It's much cheaper than if you were to buy your own frame stock and put it together yourself, or even just to buy the canvas. You'll note that the canvas that I use is heavy. It's cotton duck, like quack, quack, cotton duck. It's what they use in the military. And they sell it at different ounces. So the kind that you buy with the Fredericks is probably six or seven ounce, and then they make it thicker by adding the, um, the gesso, which then they might be able to call it nine ounce. This is 12 ounce, it might be 15, and then with the gesso on it, it makes it 17, very, very thick. So I'm gonna ask that you kind of walk around uh, in order and kind of touch and really do investigate the surface of that. The Cadillac of surfaces is called Belgian linen, and it's linen, it's made of flax. Um, is beautiful, typically like portrait artists use it. Um, many old masters painted on linen. It's very expensive. So cotton duck is your cheapest option. Okay, so the first thing that I do, and I've got a nice sturdy nail gun here, um, which is a finished nailer, but you can, use a, um, you can use short nails with a hammer, very simply. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do is get that out of the way. I'm going to glue, um, the piece of quarter round to the edge of my one by two. And that's the first thing I do. That's just to get it on there and it'll be there forever. Um, and your wood glue is incredibly strong. Um, it is archival and will last you forever. And you're gonna note that I have a little drawing up on the board there about the direction that your quarter round needs to go on. And it doesn't go on this way goes on this way with the flat side to the flat side. And I guarantee you one of you will get really ambitious and want to make your own. Um, and you'll do it wrong. And then you'll have a round canvas, which is weird. Like round at the edges. Um, I can root through there and find somebody who did it last semester. It's a mistake that it, I, I made it when I was your age. And so you're going to glue that on. You're going to see there's a little bit of a warp, which is why we nail it down. So over here on the floor, what I'm going to do me. Now I can use a clamp if I want. I brought some clamps right over here. But if I work quickly, I don't really need to. And I just need a few nails. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressure on it. And I'm going to put my thumb over here to make sure it's completely flush. Okay. And I'll try to go as straight down as I will. No, I'm going to pull that out. Straight down as I can. 
and I'll probably hand over that and go the other direction. Yeah, that's a trick. And you want to go about every six inches. Maybe every four inches if you've got a bow like I do, because you're going to need to straighten that out. And this is um, a battery operated uh, nail gun, which is nice for the studio. And I've got my piece of frame stock. That's it, that's how quickly it goes. Um, I made another piece before y'all got here, and which will bring me to my second step. So I'll go ahead and cut. Involved making the pieces, cutting the pieces at an angle. And so, I didn't wanna, um, if you are one of those people that has a hard time envisioning something in your head, you want to draw the box, what your canvas might look like, and then draw your angles so that you know which direction they will go. Because I guarantee you, one of you will cut them the opposite direction. Sorry. That, well, no. And you'll cut it with the core round on the wrong side. So the core round goes on the outside. Because the function of the quarter round on our stock is to actually allow it to be stretched taut so that when you press on it and you begin to paint on it, it doesn't create impressions of the wood. So if you don't use that frame stock or if you don't use that um, router, you'll see that. And that is, that is not what you want. You want tight as a drum, no Mars at all. No nipples, no punctures, nothing, okay? So, if it helps you to do that, then go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about the configuration that I want. And I wanna think about maybe a landscape. Let me take this out real quick. Let me just pry it out, real simple. And if you need to hit the other one in, make sure you nail on the floor. Just make sure it's embedded in there. I'm gonna put one more nail on. So I'm going to cut four pieces, and I want a long piece by shorter sides. Does that make sense? So the first piece that I'm going to cut, and I'll go over here and I'll cut it, I want to make sure I'm always avoiding where my nail is, because you don't want to cut through metal, it'll scare the heck out of you. Okay? So I'll bring both pieces over, and will somebody grab me a pencil? Oh, I got a pencil over here. And if I'm thinking about my drawing over there, the first angle that I need to have is in, like that. So if it helps, draw it out. Because you'll waste your money if you cut it the wrong way. Measure twice, cut once. Measure twice, cut once. And I'm going to cut it and make sure that the, the place that I cut it, and I can do it to perfect measurements if I want, but I'm pretty organic. I just make sure it's against the fence, my hands are out of the way, and I cut it. <laughs> I said I wanted a longer piece. And I think, I think that's a good size. I'm gonna do a long landscape. And then I have to change the angle to a 45 degree angle on the other side, okay? And it locks in there, lock. And I like that right about there. And then this will be my short side on the other side. So I make sure it's against the fence, press completely. Hands out of the way. So, this will be my short piece on the other side. I'll make the other angle on that and then I'll measure, okay? So I'm doing the exact same thing to the other piece. And I'll show you how to get it perfect. And how I get it perfect is I put it directly against the other piece, and I use my hand to make sure it's completely flat against it. And so what I'll do with my trusty pencil is I'll make my line, and then I reiterate the angle. 
so that I know which direction to cut it just because I have a terrible memory, right? I'll take that piece. Go back to the 45. back the angle because that's the wrong way. It needs to go that way. That way. So I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to do a little dry foot and see what it looks like. How long I want it. I'm going to be pretty short. Kind of like that. Keep my finger there. I'm gonna let it be organic. And that's how big it'll be. And I like that. And so I'm gonna take my other piece and do the exact same thing with it, but I still have to cut that angle first. screwed up there because I'm going to cut through that metal. So be careful. Don't let it scare you too much. It's not the end of the world, but I love doing that. So what I might do is I'm going to probably make that just a little bit shorter and then I'll trim that to fit. So I don't want to cut through the metal. So I'll do that again. Make sure I'll get it correct. So I have to trim that. Does that make sense? Yes. So avoid cutting through metal. having to worry about attaching these just using little triangles. And so what I've done is I've taken some of my masonite, cheapy masonite, and I've cut them into squares. And I could do four triangles on the front and on the back. So eight total. I would only do eight total if it were like a two foot by three foot canvas. So I'm just going to do in the front. Okay. So I'm going to take my squares and cut them into triangles. out. I'll cut two at a time here. And I'm cutting corner to corner here. Watch your fingers. And I've got four. And I one, and I'll have extra on the other side. I'm going to use this to hold it. Because I was scared. Thank you. Go back to my stock over here. Should I have stopped this at any point? No, I'll cut it off. Okay. All right. Actually, you can stop it right now because I need to Sorry. get the uh, Okay. Stop it right now? Yeah, stop it right now. Glue them. Because I always want to glue to reinforce. And you can glue both sides. Mm 
And you can use uh, duct tape if you want to keep it together or just some simple painter's tape. And that will keep a little bit of pressure on it for the temporary time, time being while, it, while it dries. And a lot of framers do this too. And it's just, you know, just a quick solution if you don't have a lot of clips or anything. Mix it together. Because glue dries pretty quickly, especially on wood that's Dry. And it's okay that there's a gap there, it's fine. It's an old saw, so it doesn't exactly perfectly, it's not calibrated perfectly, which isn't fun. So it is. Well, I've got that together and it's drying. I'm gonna do a quick little staple on the front. And what I'm gonna do with the staple gun, well, I first need to show you how to. Inside of a staple gun, you wanna put staples. And the cardinal rule about a staple gun is you don't want to put a bunch of broken pieces in, like, like this. You want to try to put in longer pieces. And you're going to notice that sometimes the staples are different sizes. Do not ever put in different sizes of staples. The staple, and this is T50, only goes to T50 staples. But T50 staples come in different lengths, short and long. And I'm just going to use the short ones here and make sure that it's all clear because that's the cardinal rule. You're going to break a staple gun if you put different sizes and you'll never be able to unlock that. You put them in the way they go down and then there's a little thing that looks like a staple. Put it in the exact same way and then you push it, push it all the way and then there's a little hole here. You have to loop this around. So press it and up. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully, I'm gonna put two staples in each corner and I'm straddling those, that, that corner there. And then I'm gonna hit it with my, with my hammer. Oh, I can't see it. and make sure that it's all in there. And I'll put it to the back as well. So I'm just reinforcing it as all. Well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be as flush as possible before you turn it around very carefully. And do the same thing to the other side. And if you do these in bulk, it's not as miserable as it looks. Because you just turn into an automatic machine. And that's not enough to keep it together. Glue in two staples on either side are not enough to keep it together. It'll feel like it right now, but it really isn't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these into the corners. And I'm gonna use quite a lot of glue so it won't move. Usually I will put um, a nail into these. Like a short nail. But I am out of short nails, and I will go through this, and I don't want to go through that. So I do that on all four sides. I don't remember what size I have the, uh, what size of nails I have in the, Oh, yeah. 
won't hurt you unless you put your hand in front of it. Make sure it's up against the corner. take this off and let that dry for you know 10 minutes if I want 30 minutes it should be pretty sturdy and what I want to make sure is that I don't have any nails sticking up along here because if I have any nails sticking up along here and that's the beautiful thing about a nail gun is it'll inset the nail but you can just hammer it down um, is it'll poke a hole through your cane so the next step is once I've got my Nice sturdy canvas already, and I could do the back side if I wanted to, but I don't really need to. Okay. Is I need to measure out the canvas that I need to lock. And there's a couple of things you want to remember. You want to make sure that you're cutting enough canvas to excuse me, sorry. To um, go all the way around and then some. So my side here is about two inches. And I like a nice, clean, flush side. You see that canvas right there? There's no staples on the side. That means I don't need to frame it when I'm done with it if I keep the sides clean and tape it off. So I want to make sure I have a couple of inches so that I can pull it and actually stretch it. So this feels good to me. Uh, on a larger canvas, I might use six inches. And the thing that you don't know about canvas is that once you start it, it rips in a straight direction because it's well made. Did you all know that? So it won't, it won't rip in a in a in a in an angle. It'll be completely level. And so I can do that for my other side. And we're gonna get a little swatch. actually start to, excuse me, stretch the canvas. And the first way that I stretch a canvas is after I've got it positioned, I do one sign. Uh, will somebody hand me the hammer, please? Thank you. And then I do the other. And you have to follow this, this, this rule here. When you do the other, you want to stretch it slightly without too much of a pucker. The pucker is not your friend. I do the other side. I do this for big ones too. And there's a reason you do all four sides first and that's to avoid the pucker. So I'll pull. And I'm just using my strength and I do have kind of like st strong hands. I do work with my hands for a living so stronger than the average woman of my age. Um, I do a little tap and I make sure I'm looking pretty good. That is when I can do increments. So from here, and I'm pulling with every single pulling, hit, make sure they're flush. And so I have to think about my corners really early. And what I want to do is, in order to make a hospital corner, and what a hospital corner is, is how you make a bed perfectly, is you pull out your corner, you stick your finger in, until you can get a edge, an edge like this. And that edge isn't perfect, I don't like that, so I'm going to pull it out. Some people can do a corner, you know, like, oh, I want to 
do something like that. I don't like that. I don't like it like this. So you can kind of mess around with it until you find it, and you'll get good at it eventually. I'm going to keep my corner like that, and I'm going to do all of my corners like that before I stretch it so that I can stretch it in that position because this is really thick and it's kind of hard to do that. So I'll get all my corners the way I like it before I commit to that as a stretch. And if you screw up, all you gotta do is tear it out, pull it out, and re-pull. So I'm ready. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here, pull, And I'm going to go all the way to the edge, but I've got to go to the other side. Pull. Pull. And what I'm trying to do is avoid any buckles. Those buckles will look ugly and you won't have a perfect surface. And so I get it. So if I have to restretch it, I can. Um, I leave this on. I do not. I need to reload. I'm going to cut that for a second. It's going to take me a minute. Pull. And at the end, I'll hammer all this in. It'll be a little thicker on the edges, and that's just the way it is. And your hands will get tired. Now, here's the thing. I didn't show you this, and I probably should have, but they have a thing called canvas stretchers, where if you don't have a very strong hand, you can use these pliers to basically pull the canvas for you. I find them very clumsy, but I definitely always use them if I'm doing a big canvas. Or no, make sure it's on And then I wipe it off. Make sure I get all the dust off. Use a wet rag for this if you want. Because, you know, the floor is dirty. You get all the dust off. And you see it's like a drum. And what the gesso will do, and I want to do three coats of gesso on this, is it'll tighten it like a drum like this. The gesso automatically does it. The first layer of gesso needs to be watered down. And you need to make sure that you get the sides. You don't have to do the back, but you have to do the sides. That's part of the stretch as well. You cannot just do the front. It will not stretch properly for you. And what you're trying to do is avoid the buckle. If you do it improperly, you do it too thick too early, it'll just sit on top and it won't stretch. So you've got to saturate it, water it down first, then do the other two layers undiluted. And then you have a beautiful homemade canvas that will last you literally five lifetimes. No kidding. That's how, much how they water do it. Do you use? I have half it. Not too much. It's still really white. You know. You can probably just wet the brush dip it into the gesso, put it on there. Or you, some people will spray water on it to just start it. Questions?